Well, thank you today for those who made it here <laughs> to the Great River Rally. My name is Rico Dents, and I've tried. I start. I founded the Great River Rally to help make awareness of young adults dealing with cancer. Um, I'm hoping to address the emotional, mental. I mean, the emotional insurance needs and medical treatment needs and um, financial needs of young adults dealing with cancer. I was diagnosed with chronic myeloid leukemia on November 2014. Um, I had vision issues where I couldn't really read a book or see a person's face from four feet away. So there's a lot of emotions that happens when your eyesight has been altered. And long story short, um, it wasn't until about six to eight months that I was able to get a new prescription. My eyesight has been pretty much restored. I have a little blurriness in my, my left eye, but I've talked to many cancer survivors who started getting floaters or some issues with their eyes. They're like, that was a scarier thing than they had to deal with than other issues that they had to deal with. And um, I drafted a book about my whole story and it wasn't until I drafted in my book saying that I was scared of going blind that the emotional um, relief came. Like literally like weight on my shoulders just left. And I've never in my whole life dealt with that kind of a circumstances that something so impactful, something so emotional like being scared of going blind um, because like that my vision was blurry um, overnight and just learning to work with that and, and address that once I was able to address those emotional needs I mean those emotional bondage as it was then I was able to get some freedom from it. Um, young adults deal with many different issues from fertility issues to financial issues to um, the mental health issues to um, issues with friends. Sometimes friends don't. Um, your best friend is all of a sudden, they're no longer around. Um, and it sucks because they don't know how to deal with your friend being sick and you know potentially of death but a lot of times now a lot of treatments people are going to live for a long time so there's side effects from those treatments from um, a thing called chemo brain where your brain's got a little foggy and you have a hard time remembering the the initial things like hey here's a person's name that you're introduced to now you remember it you don't remember it as, <laughs> as easy um, but I've learned when I deal with my own chemo brain because I take a daily pill, I've learned to de-stress. Once I de-stress, I'm able to be more focused. Um, and there's that issue or the issue of like all of a sudden your family, um, all of a sudden like here you've gotten married and then a month later you get diagnosed with cancer. We were planning on having kids together. Now because I have testicular cancer person, I can't no longer have kids. Or cervical cancer or any those kind of things. I mean there's a lot of issues that people don't talk about it. And sometimes certain chemotherapies um, affects um, fertility issues. Um, I love Matthew Zachary from Stupid Cancer and a great organization to help young adults um, as a community and help that community. Um, I'm more setting up more for the advocacy for young adults. And this is where the hopes of the Great Ribbon Rally, I contacted um, cancer agencies, I contacted um, cancer survivors, and sometimes um, the date doesn't work out for everyone and I don't have many people here. But I also have had my own challenges of traveling from one state to another state, trying to get spend 45 minutes in the day just to go get gas, find gas for that day, and spend another hour and a half to find food for the day. Um, those are my challenges as I've been going to do the Great Ribbon Rally. Um, and I'm getting better at this, um, and I will continue to get better at this. And even my planning for months out and the different Ribbon Rallies, but um, Dana Peterson's here today, and she's going to share her story. Um, um, she's a she's a Hodgkin's lymphoma survivor, and she's going to she's going to share a little bit about her struggles and stuff. Uh, my name is Dana Peterson. Um, I met Rico this summer at a camp called Can't Make a Dream in Montana. Um, he told me a little bit about what he's trying to do with the Great Ribbon Rally, um, and I love that he's uh, trying to raise awareness, raise awareness for young adult cancer survivors. Um, I am a young adult cancer survivor. I was diagnosed uh, 10 years ago with uh, stage 4 Hodgkin's lymphoma. 
Uh, my story, a little bit about it, I just uh, started to become sick, sickly, um, fevers, couldn't quite figure out what was wrong. Um, went to the doctor, thought I had Lyme's disease, uh, tried to deal with that for a while, still couldn't quite figure out what it was. Um, then I discovered a lump in my neck. Um, I didn't tell anyone at first, thought maybe it was just like some weird thing. I eventually told my mom, went to the doctor. Um, they were like, oh, that's not very good. Uh, so I ended up having a biopsy and that's when I figured out that I had Hodgkin's, um, which explains kind of the night sweats, the fevers, the sickliness. Um, ended up coming here to Madison. It's about an hour from my hometown um, to have most of my treatment. And um, there I went through a series of scans, um, CTs, PETs, just to kind of try and figure out what the whole extent of my disease was and then ended up figuring out it was stage four um, because it was uh, in my neck, my armpit, my groin, a little bit to my lung. So it had advanced uh, kind of far. Luckily, Hodgkin's is very treatable. So even though it was stage four, it's um, not necessarily as sad of a diagnosis as you would think. Um, so I ended up starting chemotherapy right away. So it was a 4th of July weekend. I was in the Madison's Children's Hospital um, getting chemotherapy. I ended up doing six months of chemo. Um, I'd come back here every other week or so, have chemo all day, and then go back home, do my usual routine, um, go to school. You know, I tried to stay involved as much as I could. That support with my friends and um, just my school letting me still stay involved with sports, which I love, and uh, band and all those activities really helped, helped me get through it. Um, then I started, just after Christmas, I started radiation treatments. So I had about a month of radiation treatments. Um, my therapists were great. It was kind of as weird as it just is to say, like my favorite part about treatment. Um, just because it's the same person, it's a constant in your, in your treatment and it was nice to get to know my therapists and um, really form a special bond with them. So after treatment, I everything's been smooth. I've had, you know, checkups, I think it's usually every three months, and then it goes to six months, and here I am, ten years out, still cancer-free, um, just going in yearly for checkups, and it's, uh, it's a great feeling to, to be uh, cancer-free and to have um, just your health back and your life back ahead of you. Um, I know part of what Rico's trying to do is to raise awareness for kind of the emotional side of uh, cancer treatments. Um, I know even though I wasn't quite a young adult, I was 12, so I was kind of in between being a kid and, and a young adult. Um, there still wasn't really any support there. It was basically I was with a bunch of children during treatment um, or I was with adults. So there was really no one my age um, to kind of talk to and uh, go through what that felt like. Um, so that's one thing that I'm passionate about is kind of having support groups for young adults or even just kind of the teen uh, gray area where you're not quite a young adult but you're definitely uh, too old to be with the children. Um, so a group that I'm part of actually in lacrosse where I went to school um, is called the Hope Lives Foundation and they are a young adult uh, support group anywhere from ages like 13 to 30. Um, we get together, kind of just talk about uh, what we're going through or what we went through. Um, it was a great support system even though I didn't really discover it till later. It was still great to be able to talk about those emotions and really just connect with people that <clears throat> understand what you're going through. Um, and there's also, you know, people that are, you know, in Rico's age group that he's kind of trying to help out that are <clears throat> just diagnosed with cancer and, you know, they're in college. What do you do? You kind of have to drop out. You um, basically have to go back to depending completely on your parents and some people don't have that luxury sometimes they're on their own. So um, although I am a young adult cancer survivor, I don't necessarily understand those struggles. But I think anything you can do to help um, support those people is great. <laughs> um, yeah, other than that, I am just glad that Rico's trying to get together and, uh, and do, uh, do what he can to raise awareness and hopefully connect people in the state. Um, in every state to provi provide a network for cancer survivors and to support them and just do what they can because it's definitely an age group that gets forgotten about, I think. Thank you. 
And so thank everyone for listening about the Great Ribbon Rally. And thank you, Dana P um, Peterson, for speaking and telling your story. And I hope as I go to the other states that we have more people here and legislators eventually here too to talk about the needs of young adults dealing with cancer.